In this video, we're going to try and apply the techniques that we learned in the previous video to a real game. So in the last video, we looked at part 6 of the Cheat Engine tutorial, which covers pointers. And the goal of that tutorial was to help us find a reliable way to identify values so that whenever the game reboots or whenever we die, we're able to easily find our health or our ammo value again without having to go through the value search. And we do that by identifying the pointer. So although the memory address that these values are at will change whenever the game reboots, if we can find the base pointer which ends up pointing to that address, we'll be able to reliably identify it. At the end of the last video, after manually identifying the pointer, we also looked at generating pointer maps, which is a more reliable way, particularly in modern games, of finding these pointers. So the game that I've chosen to demonstrate these techniques on is called Cave Crawler. And I chose this game for a few reasons. It's free to play, it has no multiplayer feature, and it has no in-game purchases. So there's no real money involved, there's no ranked multiplayer, there's no risk of me causing any damage at all to any other players. It's important if you are working on a game that has multiplayer features and ranked modes and in-game purchases to stay away from those sort of things, which is kind of difficult because whenever we're talking about bug bounty, they're the only vulnerabilities that companies are interested in. They're not interested in us being able to locally change our health or our ammo. They're interested in attacks that will affect other players in multiplayer games or that will allow people to generate in-game currencies that cost real money. So it is important to consider these precautions when looking at game hacking. In this case, we're doing everything locally. This is just client side. We're modifying the values in a single player game. But if you were looking at a bug bounty program and specifically looking for multiplayer vulnerabilities, it's likely you would need to create multiple accounts and essentially test those vulnerabilities against yourself. So for these reasons, I would say that game hacking is quite a bit more complicated than web when it comes to bug bounty. It's also more difficult to test out vulnerabilities because with a web vulnerability, you can just go and download some source code. You can go and spin up your own application or find a vulnerable application and test out XSS or SSRF, whatever the vulnerability is. But developing a game takes time and expertise, so it's a bit more complicated. Okay, so let's take a look at Cave Crawler. We can, first of all, make sure we're connected to the correct process in this process list. So I'm going to double click on Cave Crawler. We'll go and start the game, and there's a tutorial to play. And essentially, it just tells us the controls here. We can move backwards, forwards, we can jump, we can shoot as well. And we have our score in the top right, and we have our health in the top left. I've actually just reduced my health. I shouldn't have done that. But it's okay, we'll just start the health off as 3, we'll do our first scan, and we've got 24,000 results. So let me take more damage, let's do 2, and now we've probably found it, let's do one more. I'm going to go next scan, and now we've got one address left, which is awesome. That was our last chance because our health is now 1. So I'm going to call this health 1, and let's try and change the value, let's change it to 10. And we can see that our health has gone up, so we've correctly identified the address. The issue is we don't want to do this every time we boot the game. We want to find a reliable way that whenever we start the game, we've instantly got access to that health value. We don't need to go and try and find it. So in the previous video, we looked at how we could do that manually by going to find out what accesses this address. We attach the debugger, and you can see it's constantly accessing this address. The count is rapidly going up. Let me resize this. And if we take more damage, you'll see that we get some more. So this one is only incrementing whenever we take damage. And we can basically go through and look at what our pointer values are. So RDI plus 8. Remember in the last example, we didn't have an offset. So it was just RDI in square brackets or RBX or whatever it was. In this case, it has plus 8. So we would actually need to manually provide the offset whenever we add the address. And we can find the address. We can either go to the RDI here, which you can see down here. You can do the same with the RBX. Go and have a look at what's in the RBX. And then we want to take a copy of this. You can also double click on it or go to more information and it'll tell you this is probably the point that you're looking for. So that's fine. Let me grab the RDI. Let's take a copy of it. And in the previous example, we change this to hex, we need it to be 8 bytes because it's a 64-bit address, we'll change it to hex and then we'll paste in that address, go first scan, and we don't actually get any results, which isn't good. I've played around with this a little bit and sometimes you get a result, sometimes you don't, but whenever you do get a result, it constantly flashes between the correct address and then all zeros and then a couple of other addresses. And essentially, 
Modern game engines aren't quite as easy to identify pointers manually as the cheat engine built-in tutorial, so generally you'll want to use an automated process like generating pointer maps, and that's what we're going to take a look at now. So we first want to generate a pointer map on this address. Go to generate pointer map, I'm just going to call this one. It might take a little bit of time, let me resize this. There we go, that's saved. And now what we want to do is go and generate the pointer map for a new address. So we need to reset this address. We could try to die or we could also just close the game. I'm going to close the game and reopen it. We do that and we basically just need to go and repeat this process. And you might need to do this a few times depending on the game. I'm going to attach the process again. We want to keep this address list because we need this down here. And we'll start the game. We'll go ahead and scan for our first value. So I'm going back to 4 bytes. I'm going to change it to 4. First scan, we've got nearly 20,000 results. Let's go and take some damage. So we go down to three. We'll go three, next scan. Take some more damage, two. And now we've got one result, so that is our health. We could increment it if we wanted to. I'm just gonna go health two. And now we wanna do the same thing. So we've got two different addresses. This is the old one. It's got question marks because it's no longer pointing to the health. This is the address that's pointing to our health now, or that's holding our health. And we want to do the same thing, generate a pointer map. We'll call it two. We will wait for that to save. And again, you could do this a few times. Hopefully this will be enough for us. Let's try and do pointer scan for this address. And that was the second address that I clicked on. So I'm gonna do use saved pointer map and select the second scan data. And then you might need to select an address here. I've named them so it's quite easy to see what we're working with. We're gonna do health two because you can see here it's a scan data two. I'm going to compare it with previous results, so let us open up scan 1. And again, make sure you've got the correct address. This is health 1, so that's good. It's the only one it's offering us anyway. And there are more options here. We'll look at these in future videos, but let's just keep it simple for now. We'll save this as results. And we actually didn't get too many this time, so that's good. What you might need to do is use the pointer scanner and rescan for memory, so you could go and change the health value and then search for value to find. So if we change the health from two to one and then say, remove all of these addresses that aren't one so that didn't change whenever we updated the health. Another option would be to die or to reset the game and then find the address of the health and then just provide the address in here. And that can help narrow it down. You also have the offset as well. So the offset might help us identify the correct address. And also we're probably gonna want one of these cave crawler ones rather than the thread stack. So you can see I've actually only got a couple of these cave crawlers. This has the same base address. Let's just add a few of these and see how they differ. So I've just double clicked on those. They're all pointing to the correct value, which is good. Let's now close the game, reopen the game. And we're hoping that whenever we attach the process and start the tutorial, we go attach process. Notice that the value has been set to four. So it's immediately identified our health. And if we now go and try and change that, there you go, it's increased our health. Notice if we do it to minus one, we get an integer overflow. So we have a lot of health there. And now we have a point of scan result that we can reliably use to identify the health each time the game is closed. If we close this again, reopen it, and do the same thing. Start tutorial, and then attach the process. We've immediately got the health. Again, we can go ahead and we can change that. And this means we can start building cheat tables. We could identify the pointer that points to our health, that points to our score, that points to our ammo, all of those sort of things so that we can easily access them whenever we start up the game. In one of the future videos looking at the cheat engine tutorial, we will look at multi-level pointers where we manually identify the offset and trace through the pointers to get back to our base address. But as I said, when it comes to using real games, we'll most often be using the generate pointer map function. And if we have problems finding the values, there'll be a variety of different options that we can specify to help to narrow it down and identify the correct one. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Next time, we'll look at part seven of the Cheat Engine built-in tutorial. And as ever, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks. Bye -bye.